Get your ears wrapped around the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. All the scoop you need to know from college basketball to the NBA and even March Madness. News of your rising stars. Topics on and off the hardwood. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. SMC Basketball Podcast, right here on the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Bryce Lewis, and obviously we have another jam-packed basketball show for you today. Obviously, players have started to arrive to Orlando. When this show goes live, technically, the amount of days it would have taken them to get there, all teams should be there by now, by the time this podcast goes live. So... We've already started seeing some insight from the players who got there on the first day. They could have arrived about what the hotels are looking like, what the food is looking like, and what a lot of other things are happening within the bubble. Some players have not the greatest reactions, and some players are like, okay, I can work with this. But we also have other news. Clearly, we're going to talk about, since we're getting closer to the restart, practice and everything's about to start. We're obviously going to talk about some teams, you know, still making some adjustments to the roster. Obviously, like I said, we pretty much know everybody who is and not who is and isn't coming. Also, I'm going to discuss five teams during this restart that I think are very interesting and keep, to keep an eye on. And also, we're going to talk about what a championship could mean for Adam Sil- I mean for LeBron James's legacy and other basketball news. As obviously, you know, we try to touch on as much as we can right here on the podcast during our time here together. So. Like I said, we're going to get into what I said about the players arriving in Orlando. The players arrived. They have came to Orlando. They are now there. They are now in the bubble, the bubble that the NBA has created and are hoping on everything that it works. Because if it doesn't, ooh, they got to go back to the drawing board for next season if they want next season to start on time. So obviously, like I said, by the time this podcast goes live, which you're listening to at this very moment, Everybody would be there. Now, there are some stars who aren't coming till later, which is a little interesting to me how a lot of stars are not coming. Like, Kawhi didn't come right away. He decided to spend some more time with his girlfriend and family before coming. LeBron, I mean, Russell Westbrook and James Harden as well did not come right away. They're they're taking some time before they come. Obviously, uh, Nikola Jokic, the Joker, obviously, is on his way to Orlando so they'll come probably by by them by tomorrow or maybe Saturday it just depends but you know for the most part we pretty much know what's all happening obviously we're going to go step by step obviously we're going to talk about the food if we remember the first day uh with the food that was that was served to to the players it wasn't the greatest look it looked like they have a lot of what they call it rabbit food uh, you know, very small, you know, Tupperware vegetables, a little bit of meat here, a drink here. I mean, honestly, listen, this is probably to me a part of this whole bubble that's going to be the hardest to adjust to as of the NBA that this is what they're going to plan on feeding the players is that a lot of these players are used to, you know, having chefs and, you know, have millions of dollars so they can get chefs. They can always eat the finest meals. They can always get their top notch meals. They can always do anything possible to stay in shape. And now they don't have access to any of that. Now it's whatever the NBA decides to give them. And so the issue is, when with that happening, there is going to be some disconnect there. I'm sure players are going to eat and be like, "This isn't, this isn't what I want." But at the same time, they're like, the NBA is probably thinking, "Well, we're trying to keep it safe. We're trying to." Not have too much in and out food. So many people contacting because obviously they want to get real gourmet food, real real meals that might involve a little bit more, which could you know jeopardize the bubble potentially. So obviously that would be a concern if that was the case, because you know you don't really want that to be an issue. Like obviously you don't want Corona entering the bubble, and now we have an issue from inside the bubble. So. They're, they're feeding the meals. They think they can reduce it. They can give it to them to reduce it. And still hopefully, 
you know, it's not it, here. Here's one thing that I think a lot of people are going to say. You know, these guys, they're NBA players. They're they, they used to be in our position. They used to be us eating these meals. They used to not always have money to get chefs. And yes, they may have become accustomed to a lifestyle, but why is it now that you're getting fed like that? I mean, I listen, I can understand again. You you maybe expect more because it's like, listen, you you know what we're doing here. You need to at least feed us. But some people may feel like it's not that bad because they don't have to feed you at all. It's not that bad because you didn't have to come. And so complaining is not going to get you anywhere. But I can understand why, again, players decide or feel the way they feel. Because they're coming into the situation thinking, you know, we don't know what to expect. That I think that is the biggest thing about this bubble that a lot of players felt, even the ones that decided to do it, because they just didn't know what to expect. They didn't know what what should I be expecting out of this. And then now that they're seeing it, like I said, not everybody has responded in the most positive way. You know, um, we, we don't know. Maybe, maybe teams can order, you know, food for their players. If maybe one day they're like, okay, let's try to get them more of a meal meal in there, more of a meal both to their liking. You know, obviously we don't want to give them anything too bad because obviously we're in the middle of practice and training camp and games, depending on what part of the season. But, you know, that's obviously an idea, you know, and listen, like 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 a wise man named Unc said, Mister Shannon, he said we trying to keep you safe. You 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 trying to be safe and you trying to eat, but we can only do one. We gonna keep you safe, but we ain't gonna keep you fed. So <laughs> you know that that's kind of how it is right there when it comes from the food perspective inside the bubble with the players. Next is the hotels. Now, a couple of players posted uh, videos of on their Instagram of the rooms. Uh, you know, obviously you would think Disney World probably has some very luxurious hotels or very nice hotels, you would think, you know, because you think of Disney World. Why wouldn't they, you know? And then after seeing some of um the the uh hotels, some of the rooms look like they say it looks like a Motel 6. It looks like a, a La Quinta. It looks like a, a regular hotel room. You know, and again, remember these players are probably used to staying in, staying in the best hotels in every city because their teams are getting them, and now they're staying at a hotel that the average person stays in. And so I'm sure some players will look at that and be like, "Okay, this is different." Again, it's not that they've never stayed at a hotel like that, but again, you're you've been accustomed to something, and, and you didn't know what to expect. So now seeing it, it's not that they can't, you know, live that way, but it, it, it it's different. There is a re-adjustment period that has to be made. And I think that readjustment period is going to take a while for some of these guys. And, 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 and we'll have to see if it affects and lingers on. And then obviously Terrence Ross showed a video of the little, like the little, uh, social rooms they're going to have, uh, the living, like basically a social, big social space in the hotels and, and places they could go where players could go hang out, link up. Obviously, you know, I guess social distance or maybe they're doing it by team. And it looked pretty nice. It looked yeah, that that probably looked like the best part of everything right there. So it looks like they at least did that thing and did it up to a level where it's like, okay, okay, we can work with this. So there's definitely some hit and miss with what's going on. Like I said, not every player is going to be comfortable with it. It's of course some players are like, okay, this is fine. Like, listen. I'm sure the player who may only make $2 million on that team may look at this and be like, you know what? I had to do this in G League. I had to do this in college. I had to do this with my family. I don't even have enough money to buy the houses y'all got. This is fine. I'm used to it. Obviously, players like the superstars are maybe like, okay, this is different. We we haven't dealt slash done this or been in an environment like this in, in forever. So it really just depends. And And so for me, now there's another question that has been raised. Is there a chance that players drop out while in the bubble? Can can because I because if you leave the bubble, you you won't be permitted to leave, and and so that raises a question: where do you do you leave the bubble while the season's going on? Will players leave? 
if they're unhappy with the conditions. Will a player ever get to a point where they're just like, I can't do this. We we got it. We got to get out of here. I can't do this. And so that will probably be one of the most interesting parts of this entire situation because you know, like I said, you already have players coming out saying they're not really fond of the situation or fond of the rooming or fond of the food. And then, you know, what if you start playing and then, you know, this, and then we see what happens after that and then the games and you're just kind of like, eh. You know, you don't want to feel like you're giving up with your team, but and then you're hearing, you know, reports and, and people are saying that, you know, almost half the players are uncomfortable or unsure. And then you would think to yourself, if y'all are so uncomfortable and unsure, why would you go in the first place? Because you would think one of those players would be one of the first ones to drop out while in the bubble. So, like I said, it's just a... It feels like almost a big what if in a way. It, it really does. And we don't we don't know how it's going to go down. We don't know how it's going to turn out. We don't know how they're all going to put it together. It, it really is just a big what if right now in this bubble with players. A big what if of, of will this work? And like I said, you can you can hear it in what the players say. You can hear it in what the players do. You can hear it in everything. You know, obviously right now everybody's been posting their like role players or the occasional starter. But it, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, will, if, what if a star player like a Harden, like a LeBron, like a Kawhi, like a Giannis comes out. Because you would think it would affect them more than the rest of their teammates. Like, like I said, we're, we're just seeing role players already complaining. So imagine the superstars who make the most money in the league, who who definitely are the ones with the five-star chefs making the meals and luxurious hotels and apartments and condos and cars and everything. They can get the finest everything. And now being subjected to the same level of everybody else. So, it, 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 it's, it's crazy. It, it really is. It, it is kind of crazy. So, I think we're going to have to see. We're going to have to just keep a very close eye on it. Because you just, there's, you're just not, you're not sure. And you don't want to make any rash decisions. And listen. If you're a team like Brooklyn or a team like Orlando who people may say, oh, you'll be bounced out in the first round anyway, or even teams that might not make the playoffs on the regular season. I mean, realistically, you only got to do this for about a month and a half if you get bounced out in the regular season in about two months if you get bounced out in the first round. So you definitely could maybe see players saying, okay, look, it's the first round or, it's the, or we're about to get bounced out or whatever. I only gotta do this for a month, two months. I can, I can power through it. Cause I, I prom, I promise you, when this is over, you're gonna have players giving full break and giving their true opinions. And it just really saying, hey, I am not comfortable. I am not happy with this. I am not. I, I really hope if we come, listen, if, if we're going to have to do this again when the season comes back around, I may not participate. Like, you you may hear players, after they leave the bubble, really go out on a limb after, while being asked, and they'll be like, listen, this is not going to work. This, this is not going to work. And... Then the next season, that next 2020, 2021 season, the NBA is trying to start in December, may be in jeopardy again. That's that's kind of the the big thing here. So we'll have to keep an eye out for <laughs> player morale and everything. Because if it doesn't change or if players start to feel a little weird or bad about it, 
it might not work out for the best. But so, that's all we have here in the first segment. Coming up next, the Brooklyn Nets obviously have a roster that's very depleted, but they've made a couple of signings. I'll tell you who up next. And also, I'll discuss my five most interesting teams during this entire restart right here and more on the podcast. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. Last segment we discussed bubble life we discussed what players are saying and posting thinking and we also broke down is there a potential opportunity that it could be bad to the point where you may see players even drop out while in the bubble say you know what i tried it this ain't for me i gotta get out of here it's not gonna work and i gotta go it's because you know obviously there has been some mixed reviews about it you know about the rooms they're staying in and the food they're getting fed. And I'm sure when we get, when they, if they do decide to do bands or anything like that and everything, how they monitor stuff, all that will also be criticized. Now, obviously, they're about to start practice pretty soon here, training camp. So obviously, they're about to get geared up to play and try to get themselves back in the game shape. So we'll have to see how that works. But it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this ends up and, and how this goes. But now we're going to jump back into some more news. So obviously, if you have paid attention to the Brooklyn Nets, I believe their top top five, top six players are not playing. And those players are, as listed, I believe top five. Obviously, Kyrie and KD weren't playing because of injury. They were already hurt before the season ended, and they still are working on the recoveries now. Then they lost DeAndre Jordan. He got COVID, said he's not participating. They lost Spencer Dinwiddie. He got COVID. He's not participating. And they just lost Terry and Prince. He got COVID. He's not participating. So their roster really was depleted. Outside of Joe Harris and Chris LeVert, Jared Allen, I guess, you don't. I mean, the Nets really lost a lot of guys. But obviously with that comes, you know, the ability to add players to replace. So they have finally signed a man. That has been in the market for a long time. People have been clamoring to get signed to a team. And the first person they signed was Jamal Crawford. Obviously, the 40-year-old Crawford, you know, it'll be interesting seeing him come into that bubble at his age and then dealing with everything. Remember, he hasn't played the game since the end of the last season. So he hasn't played a whole year. Plus, he's coming into a bubble. COVID-19 situation, new teammates, new team, new everything. This... I'm going to be intrigued to see how he he is, and especially at his age. You know, they're talking about getting into shape. Is he going to be able to get into shape in time when the games start? But obviously they signed him, obviously, to kind of give him some type of a scoring punch. Hey, if Jamal Crawford can still go out there and ball out and be Jamal Crawford, I'm sure the Nets are going to look at this as a very successful signing, as they should. But then you have... Another guy they signed, and Michael Beasley. And Michael Beasley, obviously, is a guy who has always also been able to score the ball. He just wasn't able to do a lot of other things, right? But he's always been also, he's been able to score the basketball, and they're bringing him in. He'll have to still serve his five-game suspension, as he did get a drug violation while he was still, you know, actively in the league. So, obviously, he still has to sit out the first five games, so he won't even play to the last three games of the regular season for Brooklyn. So, obviously, you know, he'll have to get, you know, get it together, you know what I'm saying, and get himself back in game shape. And, obviously, you know, I'm sure they're going to go for a lot of young guys on their team as well. 
It's a lot of things that have to change here for Brooklyn, obviously, because they're coming to this probably the most ill-prepared team in terms of roster because they just have a bunch of young guys. And just it's like, okay, well, I guess we got to play. Remember, they, they're they still – they're technically currently seated in the playoffs right now, so they can't – I mean, they could, they could say we're not going to go, but it's like – it, 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 listen, Washington's not a better case either. Because remember, Bradley Bill's not coming for them. That's their best player. And John Wall already isn't coming. So they're they're basically depleted as well. As you can tell, the bottom, outside of the Orlando Magic, the bottom, two of the bottom three teams in the in the restart in the Eastern Conference, basically all their best players have said, yeah, I think I'm a dip. I, I'm, I'm good on it. So... You know, that we're going to have to see how it all works out and how it all, you know, comes together when, you know, Brooklyn gets out there. Because obviously, you know, like I said, they're they're going to have a completely, literally, it feels like they're going to have a, almost a literal, completely new starting lineup. Literally. That's what it's going to feel like. They're going to have just try out some new guys to say, all right, we got to make this work and let's hope for the best. So we'll, we'll have to see how that goes. But now I'm going to get into my top five most interesting teams of this restart. Teams that have interesting storylines revolving around them. And just, you know, how I'm feeling about them coming into it and stuff like that. So the first team I want want to say is very interesting to me for this restart is the Portland Trailblazers. And the reason why they're interesting to me is because of the fact that they're healthy. I mean, outside of Trevor Reza not coming back, they're healthy. Remember, the most of the season they didn't have Zach Collins. CJ missed some games. Dane missed some games. You they still have Melo. Their best big man, Nurich, has been hurt the entire season. He'll be healthy and ready to go. You still got Whiteside, who's still a defensive force. Honestly. They're the team that I've always said if they face the Lakers, I think could, t- could take a couple of games because I, they're not as bad as the record says. Because I also look at well, they were never healthy the entire year. They were never healthy the entire year. That's why they started off so bad because they had all those injuries, and now they're healthy. And so I think with that, if Damian and CJ can be the players that we know they can be, and Damian can have game time and light up the score sheet and play the game the way we've seen him play, especially in first-round series. Remember, he's had two walk-off game winners in the first round, one against Houston and one against Oklahoma City. So, first-round Dame is like top-peak Dame. And so, I mean, listen, I still would project the Lakers, if they played him, to still win the series, but it's going to be a tough series. It's not going to be a series that, the Lakers should walk into and think, oh, it's just Portland. We'll beat them in four. Because Liber- Portland is one of the few teams, to me, that can match up with the Lakers. With the like, Think about the big men matchup. Now, remember, the Lakers are a very long and tall team with JaVale McGee, with Dwight Howard. You know? I feel like I'm missing someone else, but they also have another guy who's long and lengthy. And... For me, oh, Anthony Davis too. And for me, you got to think about the Portland Trailblazers. They have Whiteside, who could go toe-to-toe with those men. They have Nurridge. They have Zach Collins. They have some guys who's who's willing to go down there and battle with him. And I think that might be a key matchup in the series, potentially. You know, and so I think that they're, they're a team that I think could definitely make a first-round matchup against the Lakers extremely interesting because they have probably the most talent out of the five, six teams trying to make the playoffs. And I think a lot of people would agree with me. Now, people say, obviously, oh, Memphis, Memphis is a good up-and-coming team, John Morant, nah, 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 nah. I mean, they've had a great story, but, I mean, listen, we know if they play L.A., that, that could be a 4-0 sweep. You know, Zion and the Pelicans, oh, Zion and... All the guys the Lakers traded, oh, a lot of the storylines, the storylines. You want the matchup for the ratings and the storylines. And because Zion's playing, not because you actually know the series is good. Remember, the Lakers have pretty much dominated the Pelicans this season. 
So, it, I mean, listen, they may be able to get a game, but it may not be that competitive. Portland's one of the, of the only team out of, out of that group to me that's like, okay, we can definitely play with these guys, and we can potentially beat these guys as well. We feel like we are good enough and talented enough to really give these guys a run for their money. The next team that, that intrigues me during this restart is the defending NBA champions, the Toronto Raptors. And that's just because, you know, they're the defending champs. Obviously, nobody expects them to be able to repeat. But I'm just intrigued by how far they'll go. Because even on the top of the Eastern Conference, nobody puts them up there. They say Boston. They say Milwaukee. They even may put the Heat above them. But they're the defending champs. Nick Nurse gets the most out of all of his players. They're they're one of the best defensive teams in the league, and they're very efficient offensively as well. Like I said, Siakam did take a step up this year. Mark Gasol, he's, he has, he's been hurt a lot this year. He's going to be playing. They still got Serge. You know, they still have, you know, OG Ananobi, Red Van Fleet. You know, they, they got some guys. And remember, there's no LeBron James in the Eastern Conference. We all knew that was their kryptonite. So, how far can they go? Would they be able to, I mean, realistically, you could sit here and say they could beat probably every team, potentially, except Milwaukee. And even, and even though they beat Milwaukee last year, people are going to say because of Kawhi Leonard. But in terms of matching up with certain teams, they they match up with teams pretty well. Like I said, Nick Nurse is not going to put his guys in a position to fail. So for me, it's, it's going to be interesting. It, it's going to be interesting to see how the team comes out and how it's all put together. Because it, it, it's just something that you 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 won't know. Take you see how it goes. And I think Toronto is a team that definitely can give any team a run for their money. Do not go into a season, a, a series with Toronto thinking you can sweep these guys. These guys probably could push you guys as far as they can. Maybe maybe six, seven games potentially, depending on the matchup. You never know. You might see surprisingly Toronto in these conference finals. And it might surprise and shock a couple of you, but I wouldn't be surprised. I, I know what Toronto is capable. They may not be the sexy pick. A lot of people may not believe. But remember, nobody thought they would win last year. And they did. So, that, they intrigued me a lot this year as well. And then we're going to get one more team here before we go to break. And then we'll finish it up the next segment. But I think that I, I'm, I'm going to talk about the Celtics. Because... They're the team before the restart or before the hiatus happened started gaining a lot of traction about being the team that could win the championship as a dark horse. Like the team that they're good enough to win it because they weren't the pick to start the season. And then seeing how the season unfolding, seeing the development of, of Jason Tatum, seeing the depth that they have and scores, you're just kind of like, Boston could win it. Boston might be able to pull it off. And so, their team to me that, will this hiatus hurt them? Because remember, Jason Tatum wasn't playing at that superstar-ish level at the beginning of the season, but he played better. He was playing at an all-star level at the start of the season, and he was hitting a superstar status. Will this hiatus slow him down? Will this ruin his rhythm? Because listen, we know what Kimball Walker is. Kimball Walker can go out there and get you 20. Jalen Brown, I think we also know what he kind of is. He's going to be a very good player, an all-star in this league. But Jason Tatum is the guy who, for them to go to the, to the finals, he has to be that superstar Jason Tatum. He can't be just good Jason Tatum. He needs to be superstar Jason Tatum. And will this, will this restart? Will this, you know, rushing to get back, will that hurt him? Will that change him? That, that's going to be, 
what's interesting to me. I think that's what's going to be the big question with with them. Because they have all the potential in the world to be just as competitive, to be just as good, and to put themselves in a position to win. But they just got to put it all together. And if they can, they definitely have a chance to me as good as anyone to come out and represent the Eastern Conference in the finals. And potentially compete for a championship. So, definitely a team that also intrigues me as well as I keep an path or I keep an eye on the Boston Celtics during this restart and how they look coming back. But that's all we have here for this segment. Coming up next, we're going to get into my last two teams. Wink. That I'm gonna that intrigued me during this restart. Plus, we're gonna talk about Adam Silver expressing his concern over a potential hole that could happen within the bubble and other basketball news. Stay tuned. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. GSMCpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. Last segment, we discussed the Nets. Making some fo- some signings, obviously signing Jamal Crawford, the forty year old, six three times six man of the year, to come back and give him some of that 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 legendary scoring punch. And they also signed another scorer in Michael Beasley, even though he will be sitting out the first five games of the season due to a drug violation that he had. We also discussed, or I started my top five most interesting teams this restart. I've already gone through three, so now I'm going to go through my last two teams and talk about that, and then I also have some news with Adam Silver. So, I said five. It's really six, but I'm going to put two teams together because they're in the same city, and they're both favorite win the championship this year. The two Lakers, the two LA teams are my going to be my number four most interesting team. And and then that's just because the Lakers and the Clippers, obviously, they're going to play opening night, basically, of the restart. They have been the two teams that people have paid attention to, followed invested their time into this whole season. It, it was all it always felt all season like this was uh they're 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 they're, they're trying to get their chemistry right. They're trying to develop, they're trying to get better for that eventual Western Conference Finals, Clippers and Lakers matchup it's for all the marbles. Some people would say that would be the real NBA finals. And it, it just felt like these teams were just always trying to outdo each other all year long. And now they have both been put with the same uh, obstacles. COVID-19 hit. Season was stopped. So, now the question is, when coming back, who's going to be more in shape? Who's going to be more ready? Who's going to want it more? Who's going to be more invested? Because remember, they're still the favorites to win. So they have to go out there and be what people are still expecting to be even after this hiatus. You know, it, it'll be crazy if 
somehow they met in the playoffs, and then one of the like LeBron or Kawhi or Paul or George AD got Kobe or a major injury because it just it now there's this lingering. We still don't have our final answer. We still don't know about these two teams. We still don't know, you know, who's the better team, who who's going to win the chip. You know, and this matchup's been just so anticipated because of that. Will will COVID and everything that's happened reduce interest in the matchup? Will 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 it make people say, eh, "Who cares? Who cares about basketball?" You know, these two teams have been at the forefront of it all. They are probably, obviously, since they are in LA, they're two most marketed teams as well. And so they have a lot of just eternal pressure, media pressure, league pressure. Like, listen, the league knows with the COVID 19. And them not having a, a crowd and, 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 and all of that, they need the LA teams to be what they were before. They need them to be the best. Because they're trying to get the best matchups possibly. Because they know we could do something if we could just get the best teams to play each other and we could keep ratings high that way. And so they're dependent that these two teams are going to meet in the playoffs, preferably the Western Conference Finals. Because they need that that ratings boost. They need that interest. They need those storylines. LeBron brings ratings. He brings storylines. The Clippers are a great protagonist to this storyline. As they're the little brother trying to overcome the big brother Lakers. There's a lot here. There's a lot here. And so the LA teams to me are just interesting. Because I feel like there's a lot of pressure on them too. There isn't the same pressure on Milwaukee. Yes, Milwaukee has pressure just because they're the best team in the East. But they're not having the same pressure as the two LA teams. Boston isn't. Houston isn't. Nobody else is. The Clippers and the Lakers face the most pressure. And you could almost say they have the most to gain. But also the most to lose from the situation. They're not just this. They're not just dependent on to give a good match. They're dependent on to be what they were. What they were leading to be. What they were aiming to be before the hiatus started. The NBA is depending on them doing what they did and getting the ratings for that and producing storylines that will infatuate and capture a fan's attention. And that's going to be real. Yeah. So, we're going to have to look and and just kind of see what happens. You know? We're going to have to see how it all turns out. And that's and those two teams are also interesting. And now we're going to get to my last team. Out of all the teams that are interesting to me. The Philadelphia 76ers. And I think it's for obvious reasons. This entire season, they were struggling. They... they, they, they Still have Ben Simmons and Embiid, but they weren't as good as people thought they were going to be. Or they didn't reach the expectations, or there was a lot of inconsistencies, or they, were, they weren't playing at the level, those two players were not playing at the level that was set and expected out of them on a nightly basis. Rumors and, 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 and reports circulated that if they don't do anything this year, one of them was gone. One of them's out of there. They're, they're done with the experiment. They said the player who would probably be out would be Embiid, and they'll keep Simmons. And so now, why they're intriguing to me is first, does that st- does that storyline still linger? If even with everything that has happened, if the Seventy Sixers somehow got bounced in the first round, because currently they're seeded to play Boston, if they got bounced in the first round, would they still pull the trigger after everything that's happened, or would Seventy Sixers say? By default, we got to give them another year just because of everything that happened. Because like, we don't know how COVID would affect certain free agent six statuses and if a team would move on from a guy. Because we, we know the situation isn't a normal, ideal situation. So would that potentially affect the overall 
you know, direction of the team. Because remember, Embiid and Simmons are having to get themselves back into shape. They're having to get themselves ready for the season. They're having to get themselves just like everybody else. We know Embiid has a history of, of, of weight problems, getting him in shape problems. Now imagine you telling this man, hey, COVID, you don't do too much, but stay in shape. We don't know what kind of condition he's in. He showed up to the plane ride in a whole hazard suit, hazmat suit. He looked fine, but we don't know how in shape Embiid is. And I'm sure the Seven Sisters are like, we got to get him in shape. Same thing with Simmons. There's a lot of pressure on both of these players. A a lot of pressure. Because they got to come out and produce. They got to come out and play. They got to come out there and be what they're expected to be. They both have the potential to be the best players. Or one, or are two of the best players in the NBA with the talent that they both possess. And and so that's one reason why they were even thinking about moving him because they weren't reaching that potential together. So with everything that happens if if they lost in the first round, would they still be be gone? Would they still be eliminated would they still say hey we gotta break it up we gotta we gotta change the team we gotta switch it up that that, that's gonna be a question that to me will linger around the 76ers this whole entire you know restart because they have the talent to be Again, a top team in the Eastern Conference. Like, they legitimately have the talent. They can compete for a championship if they break it together. But if they don't, what are you going to do? Elton Brandon's management have a decision to make. They have a big decision to make. So we're going to have to see how it all comes together. How it all eats up together. We'll have to see how it all works out. So we're gonna we're gonna have to see basically I guess the end result of the seventy sisters season and see what moves are made. So those are my five or I guess you can say six most interesting teams coming back from the NBA restart and my thoughts on each and reasons why I thought they were all the most interesting teams during the restart. It's it's going to be interesting, folks, to see what happens and to see how it all comes together. Because there's a, there's a lot here that has to happen for each of these teams. And it's just, every I've, I've already clarified why, but all these teams have my attention when the season returns. But now we're going to get into a story that Adam Silver has some concern over a potential hole in the bubble during this NBA restart. Now, on Tuesday, Adam Silver said that he is concerned if players begin testing for the coronavirus after the initial quarantine period. So, basically, all the players, when they get there, are going to be quarantined. So, what if they get, after they get out of quarantine, they start getting COVID? Oh, snap. How many other people got COVID? Now, we got to retest all the players again, even though they said they're going to retest daily. But now, it's like we have to test because, hey, what if more players have it? even though they didn't have it during quarantine. Silver broke it down in an interview with Fortune Brainstorm Health. And this is what he said, and I quote, We won't be surprised when they first come down to Orlando if we have some additional players test positive. What would be most concerning is once players enter this campus and then they go through our quarantine period and then they were to test positive, or if we were to have any positive tests, we would know we have an issue. We would know that there is an essence, a hole in our bubble, or that our quarantine or our campus is not working in some way. So that would be very concerning. And so that was his thoughts and his quote on 
a hole potentially being in the bubble if something like that happened. Obviously, if you are already aware, they start testing players out of a pool of 351. 25 had positive tests. So I believe that's less than 5% or around 5%. And so, obviously, you know, players have obviously sat out, so they're not going. Some, you know, injury concerns, some COVID, like the Brooklyn Nets players, some children concerns like Trevor Reza. You know, and obviously, you know, players are going, are all getting tested to make sure that they stay that way. Obviously, they're trying to have the strict protocols up the league has created to help limit or reduce or keep the bubble safe from a mass infection. Because obviously, Silver already said, if we had a significant spread of COVID-19, we, we would have to shut the season now. And then at that point, you probably would figure they canceled the season, which nobody wants. So... It's just going to be, a, a, again, an interesting and a trying time and and see how it all works out. So we're just going to have to see how it all comes together, in my opinion. But that's all we have right here. This segment coming up next, we're going to talk about LeBron's legacy, if he wins a championship, and other basketball news. So if you want to hear that, stay tuned right here. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. Last segment, we finished up my most intriguing teams. Top five intriguing teams. Coming to act from the NBA Restart. I finished out that list at the beginning of the last segment. Took up most of the segment, but finished out in that segment with that. I also talked about Adam Silver discussing concern that potentially there could be a hole in the bubble if somehow players started testing positive after the quarantining period. So obviously, Adam Silver has a lot on his plate and has a lot to be concerned about and is trying to do anything he can to make sure that those things don't come to fruition and end up maybe messing up. Because obviously, that would not be what's best for business. But we will continue on, and we will push on. So I'm going to start with a couple of stories actually first before I get into the main topic of the segment, which is LeBron's legacy. So obviously, there's two stories I want to get into with you guys. So obviously... If you know the Knicks situation, the Knicks first have interviewed Tom Thibodeau formally. So he is already now officially formally interviewed for the job. They say that Tom Thibodeau is still the favorite within the camp of the Knicks. So we'll see if the Knicks actually go ahead and make him the head coach. (laughs) But I'm sure they will be interviewing other candidates as well. Trying to figure out who will be the next guy to lead their team moving forward. But so here's the thing. Leon Rose was a former agent before he became head of the Knicks in terms of decision making. One of the players he represented was Devin Booker of the Phoenix Suns. There has been a rumor that maybe the Knicks are potentially inquiring about getting a star. Obviously, we heard reports it was Chris Paul, but there were also other reports that it was Devin Booker because of the Leon Rose connection. Obviously, if you know about Devin Booker's NBA career so far, he hasn't had the most success, clearly. You know, not even having a winning season yet under the Phoenix Suns. Even though they are back in the restart, they have a very, very far-fetched chance of getting into the ninth spot and being within four games. 
So we don't know how likely it is for them to actually end up making it. But that's, you know, here or there. But basically, there was a rumor that they may go and got to trade for Devin Booker. Well, a couple of execs are laughing at that notion and saying, really? I don't think, I don't even think there's anybody the Suns would really want off the Knicks to give up Devin Booker. And it just kind of shows you that the, the Knicks are still a franchise that is not taken very seriously by a lot of people. If trading for a star, people are laughing at it. That's not a good view. Listen, I think DR, Leon Rose is trying to do everything he can to get the, the perception of the Knicks change. Hiring Tom Thibodeau will obviously give them a more no-nonsense coach, a respected coach in the league. And then you might have players that are like, okay, I'll play for him. If they were able to acquire a Devin Booker, maybe, or a Chris Paul, maybe that could help with the team. We'll have to see if it actually gets to that point, but we, we, we got to keep an eye on that for sure. But another pl- play, uh, well, former player that is in the mix for the Knicks job is Jason Kidd. Now, obviously, Jason Kidd has an eye on being a head coach again. He obviously has interest. Some people even think that Frank Vogel will be unseated in a couple of years if he stays, and he'll be the new head coach of the Lakers because LeBron James loves him. And obviously, you know, Giannis swears by him. Obviously, if we remember, Jason Kidd was uh, Giannis's head coach from 2014 to 2018. And obviously, LeBron has seen Jason Kidd, played against Jason Kidd from afar, and has much respect for him. You know, I think either Tom Thibodeau or Jason Kidd for the Knicks wouldn't be a bad decision. I think either one would work. It just seems like you obviously have more, I guess, player support on Jason Kidd's side of things, where on Tom Thibodeau's side, he may have just more of a respect in general in the league as a, as a coach because of his no-nonsense, hard-on-him type of attitude. You know, uh, obviously, if you want to get into more context about LeBron James' relationship with Jason Kidd, there was a quote back in January that Kevin Arvis of ESPN said that basically summed up what he views of Kidd. And I quote, in terms of talking about Jason Kidd, LeBron says, as the only person alive who says, who sees the game of basketball with his level of clarity. So basically, LeBron's saying, the way I see the game, I only feel like Jason Kidd's the only person who sees the game like I see the game. So, obviously, we'll have to see how that works. If he does actually end up getting the job. Like I said, Tom is considered the favorite. But maybe the Knicks do go in his direction and say, you know what? Let's give him a shot. Let's give him a go. Why not? So, we're going to have to see how it all works out but now we're going to get into the meat of our final segment speaking of LeBron James we, we all know about LeBron we know his legacy I think a lot of people would agree of this generation he's the best basketball player We can debate if he's the greatest all time. But in this particular situation, what is one thing that has always hurt LeBron's career and his legacy? The fact that he's three and six in the finals. And obviously the people will always use that argument when when talking about Michael Jordan as well. When comparing the two. But he's been to nine finals. So how important would it be for LeBron to win another championship this year of all the circumstances, the COVID, everything? Remember, we've been discussing would there even be an asterisk by the championship? Some people say there'd be an asterisk by it. 
because of everything that's happened this season. But what if LeBron did win a championship in these conditions? Would it improve his legacy? Because you got to still think about this. He still has to go through the Clippers. He has to still go through the West. And then he has to go through whatever comes out of the East. If he won this championship, he would be 4-6 and six in the finals. And he would have made it to 10 finals during his NBA career. I believe Bill Russell won how many? 10-11? LeBron's about to have been to just as many. So how would it affect his career? How would it affect his legacy? Obviously, LeBron made some very critical statements after he beat the 73-win Golden State Warriors. So where would he put this? If he won a championship during COVID season, we're gonna try. We're gonna call this the COVID season of NBA. How would he feel after winning a, a championship in that condition, in that in that situation? You you can't take away from what he has done for this league, how he how he has handled social activism and everything. And now, if he was able to win a championship, he could say, listen, I played a season. The season got stopped. We were in a bubble. I overcame. And I won a championship. I'm one of the few people who, do, who does believe what Giannis said about this is probably actually a more difficult situation. Because it's one thing if the season just stopped and then everything went back to normal. It's one thing if the season stopped for a month and then... Everything went back to normal. Fans, COVID was gone, blah, blah, blah. We're back to where we were. Then you could say there's asterisks. Well, they had a month to rest up. Well, well they had a month to, 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 to get over injuries. They, they, you know, they, they had ability to kind of, you know, they didn't, they didn't just grind through it. You gotta think about it. They haven't played basketball in almost four months. They are not in that same shape they were four months ago. Even if they had to stop for a month, they can easily get it back because it wasn't that long ago they were in that type of shape. Four months, that's 120 days. They haven't played real basketball. And then on top of that, COVID hitting, what were you supposed to do when COVID hit? You're supposed to stay in your house. Yeah, LeBron might have a court, but not every player does. So he and even sometimes just playing in your court may not be good enough to stay in basketball shape. You can stay in shape, but he may not be in basketball shape. So he has to overcome the obstacle of getting himself into shape, potential injuries to his squad if that happened, and he still happened to win a championship because of the circumstances. If if everybody knows if the Lakers win, it's going to be because of him and Anthony Davis. He has a lot here that if he's able to pull this off, you can never sit here and look at LeBron and sit here and tell me there's an asterisk. He didn't do enough because Jordan didn't have to go through any of these circumstances. He never had to go through a pandemic during his career. career. LeBron did. LeBron has had to me. LeBron has had to go through a lot in his career. There was a lot against him. There was a lot that he had to deal with. Which made him make certain decisions that he made. We all remember the decision. If he had stayed in Cleveland, LeBron may still outside. Listen, if he had stayed in Cleveland, they probably would have never drafted Kyrie Irving. So LeBron legitimately could be in a spot where he may have never actually won a ring, even to this day. Potentially. And now he's in a position, could win a third championship with a th- with a third team. He'll have four, and then, remember, people are waiting for LeBron to fall off. LeBron could still come back next year and still be dominant. And what if he is? He's defending a champ. You know, one thing about LeBron is one thing he will have is longevity over, over Michael Jordan. He was able to play at a greater level the longest. I mean... Look, you know what's funny? And I'm not even trying to make this a LeBron versus Jordan debate, but think about this. Jordan retired twice. 
twice. And nobody talked about him having, yeah, he played baseball, but just him taking that time away from the game, coming back, and then playing. LeBron never took a hiatus. This was a forced hiatus. He didn't have to take He was forced to take this. This man takes four months off. There's an asterisk if he wins it. Jordan takes a year off, but it doesn't affect his legacy whatsoever. That's kind of unfair to me. If LeBron wins this, this will help improve his legacy. This will help improve how you should view him. Because he went through the same obstacles that everybody else has came through and overcame. Literally, this championship is going to be about willpower, who wants it more, who can stay healthy, everything. The decisions that he makes not to be reckless, not to put himself in in, in, in the possibility, in position to get COVID-19. LeBron has to lead these boys if they're going to win. And if he can do that, why are we going to be critical? Why would it not help his legacy? LeBron's legacy will be only but impacted positively by this. You're still going to have those Georgia, Jordan enthusiasts that won't give him that credit. But you have to appreciate and, and respect everything this man has done and everything that he's going to be doing for the rest of his career, even through everything that happened this year. So I think a championship will definitely boost LeBron up, in my opinion. But that's all we have right for you right here on the podcast. Thank you for tuning in. I am your host, Bryce Lewis. Don't forget to listen to our other amazing podcasts here on the GSMC Podcast Network. Don't forget to leave us a review, subscribe, comment on any platform that you are listening to us on. Thank you for letting us be a part of your day. I'm glad to be a part of your day. And I hope you say come back for the next episode we have where we can talk more basketball together. And, you know, just, you know have a good little discussion, you know. But, like I said... It's your host, Bryce Lewis, signing out. Everybody have a good day. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program